పమెలా మల్హోత్రా గారు దేస్ ఇస్ అన్ అమేజింగ్ జర్నీ ఐ హర్డ్ దిస్ కోట్ కాల్డ్ వన్ లైఫ్ అండ్ వన్ మిషన్ ఐ వుడ్ సే దేర్ లైఫ్ ఈస్ వన్ సచ్ థింగ్ విచ్ అప్లీ సూట్స్ దట్ కోట్ ఆఫ్ వన్ లైఫ్ అండ్ వన్ మిషన్ Uh, as a couple pamela garu and anil garu they started india's one of the first private forest and uh, wildlife sanctuaries they have converted hundreds of acres into vibrant and uh, thick forest and not just that they have uh, engaged the community in the vicinity and uh, they have freed forest land which is occupied by private people there and they developed that into a forest also and apart from that she they conduct a lot of workshops and they are part of many groups nationally and internationally too and i know invite pamela garu to take us through the journey what triggered her to start this initiative and how did they go about it this is a wonderful case study for all of us to learn from and replicate thank you so much for being a part of the panel i know invite pamela garu to address the audience My name is Pamela Gail Malhotra and I am the wife and partner of Dr. Anil Kumar Malhotra and uh as you so kindly mentioned our work at Sai Sanctuary um initially the lands that we bought were abandoned plantation lands uh which freed up the lands for reforestation um as far as how the reforestation took place it depended on what had been growing in the plantation land before we bought it if it had been a cardamom area then that was relatively easy to reclaim for mother nature and reforest because cardamom uses a lot of shade for growing and so the big grandmother shade trees i like to call them the native grandmother trees were still standing uh so it was relatively easy to allow that area to go back to nature uh with some help here and there but the coffee growing areas were much more challenging they were more challenging because of the fact that coffee uh areas prefer more sun so most of the trees a lot of the trees had been cut down in a lot of deforestation So in order to know what trees to replant uh we talked to local people naturalists uh the tribals living in the area but we mainly relied on mother nature herself to show us what trees to use from the areas in the cardamom and in any areas that were still left relatively untouched by humans and we would plant those trees over the decades now we still do uh reforestation in some areas but most of it is done by mother nature uh and one of the most important things is the role that wildlife plays in reforestation uh wildlife are the forest architects and the chief architect is the elephants uh they are critically important to spreading our forests uh because they and they alone can swallow the large seeds of the best carbon sequestration trees in the area none of the other animals can do this they can't swallow the the seed whole and therefore the elephants are critical as they walk around to drop these seeds with their load of dung which is a great fertilizer to give the forest uh, rejuvenate the forest with new saplings uh and to expand it So um wildlife is really critically important because without these larger canopy trees that are the best at sequestering carbon the forest itself becomes less efficient in be able to helping us in mitigating the effects of carbon change so we have to work with wildlife in this regard there have been a number of studies about this uh some of the quotes from the studies include losing wildlife especially from tropical forest areas which most of india falls into that tropical forest area category 
Losing wildlife is equal to emitting carbon into the atmosphere without cutting a single tree. The loss of the wildlife causes the decline in those large seeded animal dispersed trees. And India is suffering from this lack of dispersal as well because of the Asian elephant being very endangered. And because of the fact its migration areas have been so fragmented, far so fragmented by human habitation. So um, as the forest becomes less efficient at storing carbon, we end up having the problems in the form of severe climate events that we're seeing taking place across the planet, as well as problems with our agriculture, crops not having enough water on one, one side with uh, droughts, having too much water with floods on the other, drying up under the heat of the sun because there are no trees that are being used to shade the crops. So forests and agriculture actually go hand in hand. They always have, and we need to revive that concept back in India, looking at how our ancients did it, how they kept the forest intact, used native trees to help them bring in timely monsoons, leaf litter for nutrients, protection of soil during rain uh, because of the roots holding onto the soil and not running off, and the wildlife, because there have been studies also that show where wildlife gather under native trees to eat, etc., the carbon in the soil is higher than any other place within the forest area. If you remove especially large wildlife from the forest, the forest cannot take care of absorbing as much carbon in the soil or the trees themselves. Uh, we have certainly had our, uh, I don't know whether you would call it fair share or unfair share of challenges during this during this journey, um, when we came to this area, we our presence actually uh, hindered a lot of illegal works. There was a very organized uh, timber mafia. It's still organized, um, and also wild game meat. And they would come in. They would kill wildlife, cut native trees, and then cart it through the Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary where we are, we water to take to Kerala for sale. Our presence hindered that completely and has made a huge difference, both in illegal logging as well as in um, wildlife being protected. Uh, so much so that the forest department has told us a number of times how much positive impact we have had in stopping these illegal activities, which has helped wildlife recover and the forest recover, which means it helps us recover, both from the climate change point of view and because forests are so critically important when it comes to having fresh water sources for our agriculture, manufacturing, educational, health facilities, everything. Um, now, we have worked so closely with the forest department and the police department to help in stopping these activities. We've used camera traps within our own sanctuary to catch these uh, criminals. And that has led to arrests as well as um, uh, cases lodged against them. And so the activities have dropped dramatically to the point that the Brumagiri Wildlife Sanctuary now has a permanent anti-poaching squad there on site. And the police go in also for training there on site. So this is a, a, a really wonderful positive step for us all in every way. Uh, other legal battles have involved us stopping proposed projects that would have devastated uh, the forests. Uh, use it, we've used local, state, union officials, uh, including from the Lok Sabha and uh, Rajya Sabha, have gone to the National Green Tribunal. Uh, we've used the media a lot. Uh, the media can be very, very helpful 
in raising awareness and spreading the word when they're when they're being careful that what they're spreading is the truth. Um, local people that have been affected, we've been working with them and the justice system. India's justice system is really one of the main things that has helped protect India from losing all of its forests altogether. But it takes people to file PILs, People's Interest Litigations, in order to get the justice system involved in a case to stop a problem. Whether it's cutting a railway, we, some of the examples, uh, four dams that were proposed for the Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary, we successfully uh, stopped that. There was a dam in Ponampet, also a large one, which would have uh, sunk all kinds of acreage of forests as well as local people's areas, got that stopped. A railway right through the Brahmagiri Wildlife Sanctuary and a major highway that was planned right through it. We got all of these mega projects stopped using these various tactics, as I mentioned, both from the point of view of media as well as working with local people and the um, MLAs, et cetera. Um, another, some of the other things that we have been able to stop include uh, the capture and use of uh, elephants in zoos um, and the export of animals abroad for inhumane, cruel tests. So, and in this particular regard, we have worked with uh, other uh, NGOs. This is where it was being talked about before, where we need to work together. This is exactly an example of that. All of these actually are examples where we work with other NGOs and local people uh, in order to make a difference. Um, some of the work done that, that we have done with the government include the union government, states government, as, and as well as internationally with the United Nations is related to the concept of conservation in different areas, but the promotion of the concept of the private forest as a way of reforesting and rewilding India, as well as around the world. Um, we have given this uh, topic a lot of uh, exposure in discussions and presentations. I can't, I have no idea how many presentations I've given. They are in the hundreds, if not touching thousands at this point, to various groups, schools, and students of every age, um, uh, the National Cadet Corps, uh, Forest Service of India, very recently, uh, religious and spiritual organizations, other NGOs and other SCOs, uh, CSOs, um, and including legal uh, legal organizations as well, the attorneys organization in Bangalore and the justices of Bangalore also uh, that were brought in to hear presentations on the need to protect our environment in order to pr protect ourselves for the future. Uh, private forests today, as a result of discussions with various groups and spreading this concept, private forests today, including Sci Sanctuary, are now listed as an OECM. OECM stands for Other Effective Conservation Method. And this is now recognized by the Union Government of India's Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the United Nations and uh, IUCN. These private forests can make a very big difference. And working with policy decision makers, we need to make some policy changes in order to make private forests easier to set up. And we are currently working with a member of the Karnataka State Planning Commission on these very proposals. Uh, one of the examples of things that should be done, not just in our state, but across India, is there needs to be a new land classification for private forests not as part of a plantation, not as part of agriculture, but it should have its own designation as a private forest. The revenue tax uh, certificates, RTCs, are certificates needed by owners of lands in order to get loans or for selling properties. 
according to certain types of lands, like Bane lands in uh, Karnataka. There are hundreds of acres of Bane lands that are not registered. And as a result, the Revenue Tax Department is not getting any tax off of it because you have to plant, according to their rules, you have to plant coffee on every single inch of that land. Now, this is clearly not something that is incentivizes anyone to do anything for forest forestation, reforestation. So what we're proposing is a change to this RTC rule where those who want to produce, grow private forests like we have, which will be helpful in climate change mitigation, uh, protection of our water sources, uh, in, uh, biodiversity protection for food, medicines, et cetera, et cetera, and human elephant, human animal conflicts, because the more forests are pieced back together, the less reason for animals to come out and go into human habitation. We want to see this change where people that own these lands and are willing to plant forests, trees, native endemic trees on these lands and are willing to pay the revenue tax as if it had been assessed for coffee should be allowed to do this and not have to cut down the trees there, not have to plant coffee everywhere, but protect the existing trees that are there and expand them. This way they can get loans with an RTC, a revenue tax certificate. The revenue department gets its taxes and the owners could sell with stipulations that these forest lands must be resold and kept as forest lands. And this way you're protecting the whole concept all the way around. Uh, another, uh, another change that we would like to see, and actually it's a reinst re reinstating a column that used to be on the RTC. There used to be a column years and years ago called Tree Bank. This column gave a value for the native trees that were growing on a property. This value increased the overall value of the planter's lands. So he could go for better, higher loans as a result. It also incentivized him to protect those trees because they became very valuable to them. Now, for whatever reason, this tree bank column has been deleted from the RTC. Just putting that tree bank column back into the revenue tax certificate would be another incentive for planters to plant, protect what native trees they have and to plant more native trees as shade trees or along the riparian, the river areas, uh, increasing uh, migration routes, biological corridors between the different plantations in order to help us from a climate change point of view, a water point of view, helping the, the planters also with better uh, soil from the native tree leaf litter uh, less runoff because the native trees hold the soil better with their roots, all this host of different things. So just that put back on the RTCs would help. So as far as our future plans are concerned, we are planning on doing what we've been doing, which is to continue to protect and preserve forests and wildlife, including purchasing additional lands whenever and wherever possible. And encouraging others to take up this cause in quest because friends, families, businesses, other NGOs, other CSOs, we are trying to help them and have actually already helped a number of people and groups in this regard in order to get them uh, to take up the cause of the co private forest concept. We have also getting the local people involved as well uh, by doing organic workshops and handing out free saplings in the thousands for native tree shading 
Uh, and also organic farming is actually been proven in studies to help sequester more carbon in the soils of organic farms than in conventional farming areas. Uh, if I had advice to give to the youth uh, to take this movement forward, I would say believe in your dreams and then take action to make those dreams become reality. And be brave and don't get discouraged. Do not let opposition of your vision of a green, vibrant, renewable, full Mother Earth uh, and your plans to bring her about, don't let opposition stop you from doing what you know in your heart is right. Follow your heart. Follow your conscience. Be creative. Be inventive. And share your vision and work with others who share your vision and help share it to inspire others to share your vision and work with it. Uh, we do collaborate with NGOs already, as I mentioned, and um, we're working on various issues legally, using the media, spreading education and awareness, getting expert advice, et cetera, et cetera. So we welcome working with other NGOs and CSOs and uh, we are grateful for the time you've given us to share our small, our small um, quest and effort that we've made toward forest, wildlife, climate change, and a greener, greener India and Earth. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Pamela. It was a very, very impressive uh, presentation. You've covered an entire spectrum of uh, your, your work has you know, covered the entire spectrum of the activities, what could have been possible as a uh, environmentalist. And uh, the kind of inclusiveness with which you have carried out your work, that's also very impressive in the sense that you have worked with uh, the NGOs, the locals, the legal, uh, the legal uh, people, the police, the law enforcement and the, the educational institutions. So it's, it's like a very holistic approach you have uh, taken and uh, there's a lot to learn from this approach. Clearly communicates a 360 degree approach that we need to take. The approach is so holistical and uh, we need a replicable model and we have to uh, take it forward at every geographical area possible.